Hey everyone, Razor here. I'm uh, testing out my new phone. Uh, the video quality on this thing is supposed to be uh, a little bit better. And uh, so this is my first video <clears throat> on my new um, S8, Samsung S8. And it's a S8 Plus for what it's worth. So um, that being said, I thought I'd... Uh, shoot a little quick video um, if nothing else just for memory's sake that I can look back on you know down the road sometime and uh, remember this job um, I am building some plugs for um, my quote unquote stepson's bumper for his little Toyota pickup truck and uh, anyway so <clears throat> this is the blank I wound up uh, using three and a half by three and a half inch squares and I cut the first two of them um, with the squares and uh, it's amazing how long it took to uh, just get down to the the meat of the metal by nipping off those squares and uh, it was a little nerve-wracking on top of that so I took them up to the uh, my local metal supplier here and we had them water jetted to uh, cutting these uh, these blanks now so um, there's a total of six and uh, I've gotten four of them five of them completed as of this morning and uh, here is the finish version and uh, nothing too sophisticated uh, just simple machining process but uh, this lip right here is to go into a tube and then I uh, drill a little hole in the end of the tube when this is um, butted up in there and uh, I spot weld these things in here so they don't come out and uh, so again like I said this is uh, the fifth one of the four that I've already got made uh, I'll turn you around here and show you there's my toolbox and here's my other pieces right here so and there's the there's the blank sitting down there so <clears throat> this is my cord because my phone's a little low on the charge but anyway so there they are uh, I can't believe how long it takes me to cut those stupid things out but I'm getting them done so uh, anyway that being said um, we're going to turn back around here to the to my pride and joy and uh, I'll show you uh, basically how I do this so got to open this up of course I absolutely love my board jaw um, I hardly ever I think uh, I think I used my three jaw once and it was about a week ago maybe and I forget why I used it but uh, I did but that was the first time I think I've used it in over a year because I love my four jaw I just set everything up with this thing it just uh, it's easy for me to do I like the accuracy of literally getting everything that's ass. <clears throat> so, um, I know you guys have seen setups before a thousand times. Uh, but here is my new indicator. I don't know if, uh, if I showed these or not, but uh, my old one fell and uh, it didn't hold up too well. So, I had to break down and buy a couple of new ones, and I bought two of them because they were on sale. But basically, you can see that it's in my holder. Um, hopefully, you can. Yeah, you can see that. Um, it's in my holder right there. <clears throat> and I just run this up here, back this out, run this up, and... Uh, 
it's supposed to be set basically to the center of my chuck, my chuck jaw. So here we'll make a little minor adjustment right there. So um, just uh, to show you guys what it's worth, um, as you can see, this is a typical AXA tool holder. And I just went and got a piece of flat stock and I drilled it quarter 20 in two spots here so I can locate my gauge once it's sitting in the chuck, I mean in the, uh, in the tool post. I can either move this here or move it forward depending on what it is that I'm uh, getting ready to turn. And as you can see, I bent that thing like this so I can see the face of the dial as I'm doing my adjustments. So um, that way I can adjust this thing also in the tool holder. I can, I can loosen these two screws and move the whole plate forward if I need to for whatever. So I just kind of rig that up just to uh, help me out to uh, get me into whatever it is that I'm trying to indicate. So that being said, um, now I can crank my dial here and, uh, you know, set my, my indicator. I turn it one revolution and then back up to zero. And then uh, I go ahead and, because this is a rough surface on here, I kind of hold the, the uh, needle away from the surface, um, even though I, I know it probably wouldn't hurt it and uh, rotate it 180 degrees and uh, <clears throat> I know this is pretty far off right now just by looking at my jaws in relation to where they're located on the chuck so um, seeing as I have two wrenches I sit here and I can work the uh, the jaws against each other and basically move these things to where they visually match for the most part. Okay, so that that looks pretty close visually. And I'll just turn this up to zero. And then uh, crank that around. And here we go. We're about about fifty thousandths off, which isn't too bad for guesswork. So we'll split that in half. Go up to twenty-five, give or take, and there it is. We're uh. Pretty damn close right there. So now, again, all I need to do is back these off. Get tension on there a little bit and move this, these two jaws to my 25. take a little bit so because these things were uh, cut on the water jet I've noticed that uh, that they're not that concentric
so I sit here and I play with these things that's pretty close on those two jaws but yet when I come up to this this you know set um, They're not the same. It doesn't read the same. They're within about maybe 10, 15 thousandths. Which, you know, for water jet, I suppose that's not too bad. But anyway, so without you guys seeing the needle, um, I'm really close right there. Um, but as what I do is I set this thing off of this, the chuck because... I'll show you here that basically is what I do is, is as if this was my piece that this is that um, it starts out like the blank and there's what I do is uh, I literally um, I drill the center of this and then use my cutter and I come across the inside of this to get my depth in here and I also cut this lip right here in one shot so basically my jaws are hanging on to this little tiny edge right here in order for me to make these things. And uh, so then once I cut this, this, and the this outside diameter, um, I bevel the edge right here because it goes into, like I said, it goes into the, uh, the existing bumper. It has tubes. It's a tube bumper, an old Smitty built tube bumper, if you guys know what that is. And... Uh, Anyway, so once I get all these operations done, then I take it loose and I turn it around and then I put my jaws in here and I grab it in here in these four locations like this. And then I go ahead and I face the front and I turn down my OD on this and do my little chamfer here on the, on the edge. And there we go. So this whole operation, like I said, takes me about, oh, I don't know, maybe three... About three hours, I guess, by the time it's all said and done. Uh, you know, my lathe is, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously only a little eight-inch lathe. So I can only take so much metal out at a time. But uh, that's pretty much it. So anyway, um, you guys have, like I said, have seen this, these operations a thousand times. Um, I'm just testing out my new camera here and make sure the video works. And I've got all the, the buttons pushed and whatnot in order to make the video. And that's pretty much it. So um, it's Saturday morning. Uh, I think today is the 6th of May in the wonderful year of 2017. So anyway, uh, I'll bring you guys back when, uh, when I start making some progress. So until then, hope everyone's safe. Hope everyone's having a great weekend. Um, I know John Saunders is having his open house this weekend. Uh, saw a live video from Tom Tom Zelikman, I think is how you say his name, or Zelikman. Um, anyway, saw Brad up there, and uh, so it looks like he has a really good turnout. So I'm happy for you, John. In case you uh, peek at my video. Um, so until then, you guys, uh, I will uh, I will try to get these done. This is my last one that I need to do, and. Uh, I'll show you how they go into the bumper and how that's going to work with me uh, welding them in place uh, so they don't fall out. So anyway, again, hope all is well and I will talk to you guys later. Okay, so Razor saying so long for now. Okay, bye. Okay, everyone, Razor here. Um, God, it took longer to set up my damn camera than it did to uh, <laughs> to make the part. Uh, anyway, I'm just, uh, show you, uh, probably this, uh, I think it's a pretty good shot right here. Um, again, nothing special, you guys, it's just basic, simple machining that even an idiot like me can do. Um, obviously, I've made five of these, only got one left, so, uh, anyway, um, I just thought I'd, uh, make a little quick video, like I said, to test out my new phone and, uh, have something to post up for tomorrow. Because uh, Sunday is my post-up day if I have something to show. So uh, here we go. Let's get busy.
And I'm feeding this all by hand right now because uh, my little lathe here, they didn't have automatic feeds for the cross slides, I don't think, back when this thing was built in uh, 1929 or 1930. I'm actually surprised at how nice that finish is coming out on there for the first cut. That's a little impressive. So my first operation here is just to uh, true it up, number one, and to remove the scale, number two, so I can uh, drill my hole. That's my, uh, that's my second operation, so. This is pretty good on my facing cut. Um, it doesn't have to be anything really spectacular right now. I just want to clean it up. Make it somewhat true. So I can drill my hole. Okay, so I'll get this out of the way. my carriage slide or the carriage up there and if I remember right I think it was Dave I think it was Dave that uh, told me I needed a different type of drill to uh, to do this operation um, so you're gonna have to remind me Dave if you see this because um, I think you were the one to ask me if I needed anything too at some point. So, uh, to answer your question, I guess I could probably use these drills that you're talking about. So, uh, anyway, but in the meantime, I use what I got. So, as what I do is uh, this whole blank is only a half an inch thick. And just what I'm trying to do is eliminate some of the weight. Not that it really matters, but uh, eliminating some of the weight just the same by, by turning out the center, like I showed you earlier. Um, so is what I do in my preliminary uh, procedure here is to drill this thing approximately three-eighths of an inch deep because that's about how much material I want to take out from the center so I just eyeball this thing until uh, until it looks like that I'm about three-eighths of an inch in there I mean when you've been messing with metal as long as I have whether you're a new machinist or not you can still pretty much guess what dimensions are what depths are and that sort of thing so anyway and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect anyway so the next step is to getting out my drill index here behind the camera and I start off with the quarter inch drill bit As you can see the tip of it right there in the frame Okay, so uh, run that up there. Put a little goop on here. It's amazing how much that stuff helps. Cutting things dry or with a little bit of oil. So now I just run this down until you can feel when it bottoms out against the, uh, the other drill bit that I used. And uh, that's it. So. That's all it is for that one. And for what it's worth, you guys, I always clean off my drill bits like this before I put them back in the in the uh, in the case in the index. 
Okay, so I'll go with the three eighths next. This is uh, this is the, my procedure that I've been using to make these damn things the whole time. So uh, it's worked so far. So might as well just follow suit, right? Just again, just drill that to depth. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, is what I'm uh, looking at is that uh, the depth right here from, from the outside of this thing to where it crests and when it starts making the taper is only about 3 16 But then I've got about 3 16 of an inch of taper inside that hole. So, uh, that's uh, that is my finished dimension that I'm looking for. So that being said, um, I use the three eighths in here. And then I grab my little three eighths two flute end mill. And uh, yeah, I know you're not supposed to use an end mill and a friggin' chuck, and you're not supposed to use it in the lathe like this and all this other stuff, but you know what? I'm limited on my tooling. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys are just gonna have to suck it up. Bear with me here. Ding, dang, darn it. So, is what I'm doing now is I'm gonna uh, take this in here and it will flatten out my hole. Making a little chatter there, but put some more goop in there. Getting carried away here now. It's amazing how much that thing flexes. It's uh, pretty much par for the course. It's it's done that on, done that on every one of these. So uh, I just take it real easy, real slow, because I'm no I'm not not in a great big hurry to get this stuff done. So uh, it gets done when I get it done. All right, so that looks pretty good up inside there. I don't know. The, the, the camera kind of picks it up, but not, not really. Okay, so that's done. Now, I uh, put my half-inch drill in here. Chuck this up in there. Again, put some more goop in there. Things work better with goop. All right, so uh, it's amazing how much that thing chatters. I think that's the first time I've ever dropped my damn chuck key. Of course it would be on film for Stan to make a comment. Hey Stan, what's going on buddy? <laughs> All right, so uh, now is what I do. Um, I switched a tool here. I'm gonna try a new, a new tool here to make my cuts across the inside of the, the piece here. <clears throat> See how well this thing works or it doesn't work. Okay, so now 
I, uh, I like running my lathe. I don't, I don't like turning it off if I don't have to. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing to do that. Um, I'm definitely cognizant of that thing spinning, believe me. And uh, as time goes on, I do get a little bit more comfortable working around it. But that's not to say that I get complacent, because I don't, at least not yet. So, but now I'm going to move my, um, my carriage stop right here. And uh, that's the reason why I stopped the chuck, because the jaws are hanging out. And I don't want to inadvertently hit that damn thing if I'm moving my carriage stop. Which, technically, it won't, because, see, here's, you know... I mean, there's my finger, full width of my finger in there, and uh, it doesn't even come close. But, you know, like I tell you guys, just to be safe, you know, better safe than sorry. Just turn the damn thing off and make your adjustments, put your tools in, take your tools out, you know, whatever. Whatever makes you feel comfortable, just, uh, just be safe. All right, so here we go. So now is what I'm doing is with the carriage stop, see, it, it, it goes and it just stops. And now if I want to move this in, I will move my compound to move this in. See that? As I, I, as I turn it, I can move it in. So anyway. And I don't know. I don't have any idea how much material I'm removing at a time by doing this. But I try to take as much as I can without, you know, putting too much stress on the machine itself or causing any chatter or that kind of a thing. Okay. I forgot to, uh, forgot to tighten down my carriage because it's funny how when I'm cutting this stuff, it wants to move the carriage back away from the part. So I have to lock my carriage down in order to uh, keep it where it's supposed to be. All right, so. Uh, see, you can see it starts cutting right away because it started moving almost instantly. That's telling me that maybe I'm taking a little bit too much material, so I'll back off my depth here and continue out to my dimension. And I'm just guessing here, right off the bat, as to what that is supposed to be. So is what I do is I take my old one clean it off here and with my new Mitsutoyo calipers I love these things by the way um, yeah basically they're supposed to be at 2 inch 300 is pretty much it right there glare focus there we go 2 inch 300 so what I do is that being I just lock it down right there that measurement and I stick these in here and I see well I'm on the edge of the of the bottom of my cut and you see how far up it is on the on the top right there maybe there you go so that tells me that half that distance is what I need to go so I'll just kind of guesstimate that I need to go about another eighth of an inch So let's do that. Yeah, okay, I would guess that's probably somewhere close. Let me move my carriage back. Get my 
my stuff out of the way check this again okay so I have about another eighth inch to go which means a sixteenth of travel on the tool obviously So I'll leave it right there. There goes my dab burn compressor. Let me go shut that off. I'm sure you guys don't need that thing running in the background. Okay, all right, so, still looks like I have about an eighth of an inch, so I didn't go very far in that last cut. It doesn't have to be perfect, but all the rest of them are, are good, so I might as well keep it up here yeah I'm getting really close now Maybe this is why it takes me uh, two and a half hours to cut one of these out. Okay, so that is like really close right there. It's still a little bit under, which is what I want. Because I'll come back once I get, you know, the middle of that thing hogged out basically. I'll run my tool in and square up the... Uh, the shoulder and uh, true up the uh, the dimension so uh, we're gonna leave it there for now that'll work and because I cranked out my comp